everybody, I hope you're all well. Well, this is the long-awaited follow-up video about the Emco Unimat SL lathe. I made a video about this lathe four years ago and I posted it on my YouTube channel. And it has been extremely successful. The next burning issue is can you machine steel on this lathe? It is quite possible to machine steel on this lathe and I have made steel components very, very accurately. It's important to keep the workpiece well lubricated when machining steel on the lathe. I was lucky enough to acquire this lathe from its original owner 15 years ago and it came with many of the accessories you see in my videos. There are a couple of things to remember when you're working with this lathe. What you have to do is make sure that the carriage return and the cross slide are rigid at all times during machining if you want to maintain accuracy. Before and during machining I always check the cross slide tensioning bolt on top of the cross slide. This bolt should be as firm as you can get it while still maintaining free movement of the cross feed hand wheel. I also always check the longitudinal feed tensioning bolt. I check for any lateral movement or play of the cross light carriage when it's moving on the cross light column. I find it's important to have the right turning speed when you're turning any kind of metal. And I have this belt in the middle, middle setting of this pulley and the middle setting of the bottom pulley. And that is my almost my basic turning speed. If I want to use the drilling attachment, i.e. I've set up the lathe in the vertical configuration, and I'm using it as a drill press, then I invariably just move this bottom belt to the lower pulley. This gives me a slower speed. Another thing I've always done is I join these belts myself and I maintain them fairly loose, a loose fit, so that if for some reason something grips in the lathe, the belt will slip and not damage the jaws of the chuck or the workpiece. If I start at that point and I rotate the ran wheel exactly once, the lathe tip has advanced towards the center of the work by exactly 0.99 of a millimeter. Rotating the longitudinal feel hand wheel one full rotation will also advance your longitudinal feed by exactly 0.99 of a millimeter. I make use of a depth stop on the lathe bed here. And you'll see that in a lot of my videos I've got the depth stop set there. Then when I'm feeding towards that point, the cross line always stops at that point. Another very useful feature of the Unimat lathe, in my opinion, is this hole which goes right through the headstock spindle. I made this threaded adapter which can be screwed onto the pulley spindle here. Now I can insert a piece of perfectly machined bar on both sides through the headstock spindle. So now I've locked the bar in the spindle and now I cannot insert this piece of material any further than that point. I would then machine the face of the work down to an exact point which I would set with the depth stop on the carriage here. And then I simply install the next piece in, face side towards the back, 
and machine to the exact same point on the headstock. And in that way I could make four columns very quickly of exactly the same height. Which is quite a useful feature. Not only for columns, for any kind of operation where you have to machine four cylindrical pieces of work exactly the same length. In other words, face them from both sides and so they have a machine face and they are exactly the same length or height. A good example are the four steel columns which for support the cylinder of this model steam engine. They are identical. If you want to machine a taper, rotating towards the front will make the taper at the tailstock end of the workpiece. Rotating the headstock towards the back of the lathe will make the taper towards the headstock spindle. In other words, the tailpiece end of the work will be wider than the headstock spindle end. I set the angle of the taper by placing the protractor on the cross light feed carriage until this part of the, the this angle is correct in alignment with the headstock. If I lock the headstock in that position now with this bolt I'll get a three degree taper. I don't have a tailstock die holder for this lathe, but all I use is the normal chuck which I use for drilling operations on the lathe and I insert the die into a normal handheld die stock holder and push the die up against the part of the work that I want to thread with the tailstock and what I do is I set it so that it's just possible to move the tailstock and I can also feel how the thread is progressing against the work so that I don't put too much tension. I always rotate the chuck by hand when I'm doing any kind of threading operation. And that's great because you can feel exactly how the thread is progressing. Another threading option which I've used before is to mount the die in the Unimat chuck while the chuck is mounted on the tailstock. Similarly, when the lathe is mounted in the vertical configuration, I can also tap, use taps very, very accurately and tap holes at exactly 90 degrees to the work. By applying light pressure on the headstock pinion lever, the tap can be advanced in the hole. Well, I think that's enough for now. I don't want to make the videos too long. Until next time, 